Welcome back guys! Today I'm going to show you one of the ways to actually spot weld your fuses or fuse wires to your battery packs. The spot welder I'm going to use in this video is this one here. It can be bought from eBay somewhere around $200-$300 and it's called 709A. Good thing about this one is that you can use both the handheld device and also use the spot welding directly here. But using this one can be tricky when you have large packs and then the handheld is a lot better. The same goes when doing the fuse wires with this. This one is also better as well. This one also has the pedal and that's the one that triggers the spot itself. And then you just set up how the spots should be do. Four pulses, six, eight and the duration and the power. So basically you have the battery here that you are going to spot well too. It's important to have the spot welder set in a such a way that it doesn't burn through the actual cell. And on the cell fuses or the fuse wire itself it's a lot easier than spot welding nickel tabs because nickel tabs generally do need a little bit more stronger weld. On the thin wire like this one I'm using here that is 35AWG roughly around 0.178 or something like that in millimeters and it's set to blown around 5 Amps. This is really really easy because you do not need that much current. First of all, you can do it in two ways. Either you put both tabs on the wire and weld it like that or you just use one of them. But what I have learned is that it's only the one nearest the fuse or the wire that goes over the bus bar that actually will be holding it together. I have set me into roughly 50% uh, current and uh, 4 point pulses. So basically what I do is I go in, I take the wire under one of them, firm pressure and I press the pedal. And that's it. So what you want to be able to do is almost pull this apart. And generally it actually goes and breaks rather around where you actually welded it. So this is a sweet spot that you need to figure out. If we compare how hard this sit on the cell compared to actually soldering it, I would say that doing it correctly here it works pretty darn nice and it will sit roughly the hard in such a way that the solder does. So let's take our example here. We have our bus bar here and we're going to put this together now. So I go over it like this and the tricky part is actually to and we take the next side we cut this away there we got it you could basically go over here as well So basically, here we have it now. It's important to understand that all cells behave a little bit differently. For instance, the blue ones I have here, as an example, they are a lot harder to weld and they will come loss rather easy if you do not weld with a little bit more power. Meanwhile, the ones here sit firmly without a problem at all. So it's just a matter of actually soldering the bus bar now. What you see here is actually one of my batteries and I'm going to show you a little bit now when I do the spot welding on this battery here and you will see how it goes. I just take some tape around it and this will of course need to be removed later on but it keeps the stuff in place meanwhile I do the spot welding. I do recommend to go over it and just feel so the spot welds actually sit tight because if they don't do that you need to start all over again. The 
So guys, this is how it's done. Do I recommend to do this? Uh, yes and no. The thing is, if you aren't aware of what you're doing when you're spot welding, they may not sit tight enough. And if they don't sit tight enough when you are starting to pull on them, they will get loose again. So you always need to go back and feel everyone to make sure that they actually sit. Let's see if I can find anyone that is loose here. I fail as well sometime. Actually this time it seems like everyone is sitting tight. Um, and if you do it too strongly you will only burn off the fuse wire or you burn a hole in the cell. So if you are unsure of that I do recommend that you are continuing the soldering iron. It takes a little bit more time but on the other end, it, you know that it always will stick properly, as long as you use a soldering iron with enough power. Before we leave this aside, we have another test that we need to do as well, and that is actually to compare how good are the welded wires compared to the spot welded ones on the battery. So, we have tested the weight and we know that this wire easily can handle 750 gram. It's now time to find out where does it break. Does it break at the welded part or does it break at the solar part first or somewhere else. And to make this very very simple, I only have this tied around here and I solder the wire on. So let's take the first one and we start with one of the spot welder ones. First spot, spot welded tab, that did break in the bottom, so let's redo it again. 750 gram, and it broke in the bottom, so the spot weld is still holding. Let's do it, do it a third time. And it still break where I solder it. That's good. So let's take the next one. And we go for the next spot welder one. That break in the bottom as well. And in the bottom as well. This time it broke in the middle, and that means that the soldering and the spot weld is fine. So let's take the next one, and this time we actually solder it directly on two cell. Solder cell test one. And it did break at the cell itself. So let's resolder it again. And yes, you may say that this wire is already used, but I will all soon test with a new one. It break up there again. So let's solder a little bit closer. And it broke at the solder point. So now it's time to take one. This wire has never been tampered with or used or anything. So let's solder this in place instead. Second solder cell, new wire. It broke in the bottom at the solder place. And it broke at the top at the solar point. And it. See if we can see that. It left a little bit in that edge. So, guys, what does this tell me so far? First of all, this is not scientific test in terms of proper equipment. So, don't take it for that. But. As it seems, the two spot welds that I did, did not break 
but the solder joints actually did break several times and that's rather interesting because that tells me that the, so the, the spot well itself seemed to be rather good but let's do another test let's crank up and let's do a spot weld where we actually weld it a little bit harder I did crank up so if we take a close look here you will see that this spot weld was done with rather a lot of force and this is where I think it can be a tricky that you use too little or too much current and as you can see I used too much current in this case and the spot weld just removed itself instantly it did not last let's do it again now I did another spot weld also too much current and it just went off so let's take a look at those spot welds if you take a closer look here you will see that that one in that end was too much too much too much and you see it by the burn mark between the points if you get that type of burn marks you had way too much current and this cell actually went vented as well and that's because I used too much current so that's the first scenario what if you use too little cur current instead what will happen then so let me turn this down and let's say we go with half the current that I used before half the current or half the energy as before and it broke at the weld points so let's do that again half the current and it broke it seemed to hold just just a little bit so let's go back where I was just to make sure that we actually have it working and that seemed to hold a little bit better yeah it holds a lot better so basically the thing is when you look at the welds this is really really hard you will see that this one here have some burn marks and that's where you want to be because if you have too little and no burn marks at all the wire will most li likely not be sitting left or will most likely not work so a conclusion about this is it better to solder or to spot weld the wires first of all the soldering part is easier I would say and I have done quite a few spot welds currently so if you are afraid of it and you don't have the equipment get yourself a proper soldering iron and solder the fuse wire instead if you have the money and you don't want to spend as much time go ahead and get yourself a proper spot welder but when doing that and go spot welding you need to do several tests right side is the cell that I have used too much current and you have the burn marks and then the wire will not function and you may even burn a hole in the cell the left one I have done both the too little current and too much current and this is a very very delicate position where you need to find yourself where it works the best and I do recommend that you do test this also note that I were only pulling one way and that's if we look at this level I pulled this way I did not pull this way and that is also something that needs to be taken in consideration because depending on the bus wire that you are using you may be pulling the other way when you have the finished pack you might want to spot weld against the copper bar as well and that won't work good at all um, so I recommend that when you have spot welded everything go back 
and do the soldering part to the bus bar itself. But before you do that, always cross check that you have all the spot wells properly arranged. And it doesn't take that long time to actually go back with a proper soldering iron and solder all the bus bars. As you can see here, I do it pretty pretty fast. What takes time I would consider is the fact that you need to solder in that case the fuse wires to the cells. So meanwhile I have been talking here and just talking garbage. I have done 40 cells. So that's how fast that goes. So guys, I want to thank you for watching this, another exciting episode if you ask me. Uh, I have down below linked in the spot welder that I'm using. I have also linked in the fuse wire that I'm using in this video. There's also other, other links for other stuff that I do use. So if you like this video and think it's very very interesting, always feel free to check out my Patreon and PayPal links. Otherwise, give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and if you like, comment. Once again guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.